Uh, Mr. Sams? Mm. Hey, what are you doing? What do you mean? Um, isn't that like a piece of metal? It's a screwdriver or something? Yeah, I learned this from my children. They were trying to do this at home the other day. Did you let them? My wife didn't. I, I couldn't figure out why, but... So you're going to stick the um, screwdriver into an electrical socket? Sure, why not? Um, was he... Metals? Yeah. Are good conductors of electricity? Uh-huh. And if you stick that into the socket? Yeah, it'll conduct some electricity. Into you. Oh. It's called electrocution, Mr. Uh, Sams. Oh. Yeah. So probably, I probably shouldn't do that. So one of the properties of metals that you maybe didn't know, they're good conductors of electricity. So I shouldn't do this. I think that would saying. be a very bad choice. Oh, all right. So Mr. Sams, what did you learn from that little incident? Um, not as much as I would have learned if I actually put it in there. <laughs> Well, trial and error. You are yeah. a scientist Actually, after all. Actually, when I was a kid, I accidentally touched the prongs as I was plugging in a lamp to the light socket and got a nice little jolt at my arm. So no, I, I, I've, I've experienced it. No, yeah, just in a general household repair, I've tried yes. to fix things and felt the uh, shock of electricity. Uh -huh. It's not pleasant. No, not, not at all. <laughs> no, not even remotely pleasant. Okay, so we're talking about metallic bonds here today. So metallic bonds are bonds between a metal and a metal. A metal. Now, not necessarily two metals. But well, atoms of, it could be the atoms of the same metal. So, for example, here in this picture, yeah. I have a picture of some copper. Some yeah, basically, copper. what's holding all those copper atoms together? Yeah, because that's, each of these is made of a bazillion copper atoms. Right. And so somehow they're connected, and it's connected by a metallic bond. Mm -hmm. Okay, now some things about metallic bonds, or yeah. metals, is that they are good conductors of, actually, a couple of things. Electricity. Yeah. And heat. And heat. We saw that a minute ago. We actually didn't experience that but wisely. <laughs> Electricity and also heat. So if you take a piece of metal and you stick it in a fire, um, it and warms, up very, it warms up very quickly and your hand will burn if you're holding it with your mm -hmm. hand. That's, That's a, a lovely hand. Isn't it beautiful? So, um, yeah. But the interesting thing is that the, this particular property of metals teaches us about how this bond works. Because they're good conductors, what is electricity? I bet a lot electricity of is electrons moving. So it's electrons moving. So if you can okay. get electrons to move, that's called electricity. Okay. Like electricity is the flow of electrons. In fact, we talk about a current. You know, there's a certain number of amps. That's electrons just how fast. fast the electrons are moving, mm -hmm. essentially. All right. So there. So what's true about the electrons in this copper atom is that the electrons, actually the valence electrons, are free to move from atom to atom to atom mm. and from one atom of the of the of the uh, of the screwdriver to the next to the next to the next to your hand okay so that is kind of the key thing to understand about these some other properties mr. Sam's about um, metallic substances mm -hmm. is that they are malleable I love that word malleable. malleable malleable means that it can be bent so if I take this uh, pop can I can crush it in my hands because it's malleable Okay. That means it can be bent. Or you can, take, you can take a piece of metal and bend it. Yeah. Or you can even hammer it out into a sheet. I've heard it defined that way yeah, before. That's too. True, so too. if you have a lump of copper, if I took a hammer and smashed it out, it would smash out into right. a thin sheet. Secondly, it is ductile. Ductile means it can be drawn into wire. So you okay. can uh, pull all it down. Metals can wire. be drawn into wire. That's all a right. thin wire. That's what the word ductile means. So basically, there you can you can reshape it. and It's not brittle. It's not going to snap like uh, if I if I took a hammer to salt, it's going to obliterate into a million little pieces. Right. Whereas if I smash a piece of metal, it's just going to flatten. That's correct. Okay. It, thirdly, they all have a shiny luster. They're okay. And if shiny. they don't, you can bring them to such. Well, by polishing it. Then even then, they're... It's not the pure metal. It's not the pure metal. Dingy. That's true. So it's always shiny. And as a note, all metals are silver in color with two exceptions. Copper. Copper. And gold. Oh, yeah. Now, every single metal is a silver in color. Like this particular... This is probably some kind of iron substance that I have a picture of here. All right. Um, now, we need to talk about... Here's another shiny. Now, this is a... I found this on Wikipedia. It was really cool. It's a... It's a an very engine. large engine. It's, it actually, that was what it said. It's, it's a large engine from Russia. Okay. Maybe it's a tank engine. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, so this is something. What causes the metals to connect to each other? Why is the copper connected to the copper? Well, there's this concept called a roving sea of valence electrons. What in tarnation do I mean by a roving sea? What in the heck is that? Well, here is kind of a way to think about it. If you have a bunch of metal atoms, so let's say each of these positive is the copper nucleus. So this is just a bunch of copper or whatever. 
then each of these green dots is an electron. Think of the electrons. It's almost like a, a commune, Mr. Sams. In a commune, whose property is it? Everybody. Everybody has a property. You've got property. I've got property. It's not yours or mine. It's, it's ours. ours. And so these green dots are the valence electrons, and they're just free to move around the atom. Or not the atom, but the atoms. Mm -hmm. And so you can have some electrons. So for a moment in time, it, tends, it looks to me like you got more electrons over here on the right than you do on the left. Well, guess what that does? That makes this side over here negative in charge. Okay. And it causes this side to be more positive in charge. And so by that kind of constant flux, things get attracted to each other. Because there's always regions of positive and regions of negative, and positive things are attracted to negative things. Okay. That, that's that's kind of it. Okay. All right. So to kind of explain this, I, I put it in words, but I've said it already. Electrons are free to roam, which causes a charge separation or flux, as Mr. Sam just called it, and hence a bond because you get a, a negative side over here and a positive side over here, and positive things are attracted to negative things. Okay. Okay. So that's it. Cool. See you in class. Yeah. I think I'd like.